Welcome back to part three of the Adventure Try episode six review. So, the next day at school, Mimi is organizing her school bag when she overhears the students say they heard that she was on TV during the monster incident yesterday. She shoots them a glare, telling the other girls to say it to her face as she grips her bag. Ouch. We then cut to a table with different fabrics, threads, needles, scissors, measuring tape, and other accessories, along with Mako's sketch in Mimi's sketchpad. There's a crash, and Sora runs in to see what happened. It's Mako, clumsy as always. <laughs> Sora tells her to be careful around all the sharp objects, but Mako's already pricked her fingers everywhere, so it's a good thing Sora's here to help. We cut back to the study, we cut to the, um, either the study hall or the committee room, and Mimi's texting on her phone when, or maybe she's tweeting, who knows, um, when three commit. well, no, this is based in, what, it's the year 2005 in that continuity? So yeah, I don't think Twitter's a thing yet at that stage, is it? Someone research that. Anyway, she's on her phone, anyway, when three committee members approach her about the cafe costume. Uh, the cheerleader one. They refused to wear that sort of outfit to serve the guests. Mimi never asked them. She just told them what to wear, and to be frank, they won't stand for it. They say she's Jikochu. And Mimi asks what Jikochu means, and she's told it means someone who is self-centered and annoying. Which uh, drives a spear through Mimi's heart <laughs> to hear, uh, especially after her uh, words with Koshiro the day before. So back in the sewing room, uh, Sora is helping Mako out with a sewing machine. And Mako's awed by Sora's work and loves the final result of the cheerleading outfit she presents. Sora tells her there were plenty of kimono scraps in the back and she can use whatever she likes. Mimi storms into the room, annoyed, and Mako tries her hardest to show the work Sora did uh, with the costumes. And Mimi tells her just to forget it that they decided not to go with the design. Sora tries to apologize for working on it, and Mako says that they've already been made, which makes Mimi lash out at Mako, and she quickly realizes her mistake and runs off, upset even further. So we cut to Mimi then walking alone in the evening time, and she notices Joe on the boardwalk beneath her, and it's the same where they all met in chapter one, like that seems to be the meeting point for this series, like just under that bridge. Um, and she goes to join him. She asks if Joe is skipping prep school, and if that's okay, even with his exams. And Joe asks, what about her? Should Mimi not be preparing for the school festival? He carries on the same footpath that Mimi was on, and catches both of them on the boardwalk. And she rushes toward them, but stops when she hears Mimi ask Joe if she's Jikochu. Joe hesitates. And Mimi takes that to mean yes. It's fine though, she's not annoyed by the response. As she knew on some level, but these past few days, she's been made painfully aware. When she says when something feels right, or something feels good, she just goes for it. Not seeing the wants or needs of those around her. She tells Joe that she's hurt Palamon because of this, and she's lost her temper with Maymay. And she's sick of herself. <laughs> Poor girl. Joe says that if she's doing something, as long as she's doing something, then Jikochu is still better. Joe is disgusted with himself. He says he's a worthless coward. He asks Mimi, why is it them, again, that have to take care of things? Because they're digidestined? Why is, why is that destiny theirs? Why are they the chosen children? Mimi wonders how he still has that question, even now. And he, he says he knows, he was over it, but even though you get over it once, the same questions return. And then it starts to rain. Because anime and you know, dramatic effect. Um, but he asks, how long must they be the Digidestined? How long must they be chosen? Uh, Hikari is still actively eavesdropping on this conversation, by the way. She hasn't moved off the steps from where she stopped. <laughs> um, there's, Joe says there's so much that he has to do at this point in his life in order to join society and become an adult. He says 
he has to choose his own way to adulthood, not to the digidestined. And that's why he's been studying. So, uh, and so he's skipping prep school? Mimi asks, almost scoffingly. Maybe trying to tease or get a right, at, you know, a laugh out of Joe. And he says, uh, well, she has him there. So he turns and heads to his prep school, telling Mimi that it's better to be Jikochu than a coward. We then get a shot of Joe talking to himself, berating himself for saying that he has to be an adult and calling himself a coward before wiping tears from his eyes and continuing on to prep school. End credits. I'm actually welling up here uh, for Joe and Mimi. Okay, so we're only at the end of episode 6. Right, so there's still two episodes of this left. My opinions may change as I reevaluate the episodes and I'm looking at them more critically for these reviews, but I will say this so far. Like in chapter 1, where each episode went from slow to fast, slow to fast, right? Episode 1 was slow, episode 2 was fast, 3 was slow, 4 was fast. This chapter seems to be a balance. Starting up slow, picking up pace in the middle of the episode, and then slowing down before the ending. And I think it's a pattern that works. This episode we see shades of the old Mimi from season 1, rather than the troll character she became in the last series. Or, sorry, in the last chapter. I remember my whole thing of troll, Tashikawa troll. There's a lot less of that in this. And the, the Mimi in this is a lot more like her season one uh, version. And maybe to a little extent her season two. I mean, she wasn't... She wasn't as... I need to go back and watch season two. I, I Honestly, I barely remember Mimi's parts in season two. You know, and that's... But she's definitely a lot more like the season one Mimi that I do remember. Um, and much like how Tai Chi is now realizing the real repercussions of the damage they do, or they can do, Mimi is facing the brunt of her more insincere and egocentric side, as Joe is trying to figure out how and why he still fits into the equation, cowering behind his studies because he can't do this for a third time. He can't continue to be a chosen child when he's trying to make his way toward adulthood. Um, so not only does Joe share Mimi's self-centered nature, but Tai Chi's growing fear and I suppose a resentment of, of being a digidestant, of being a chosen child. I mean, is he really expected to drop everything in another 10 years if this happens again? And how? when is it somebody else's turn? You have to think this in this continuity so far. Daisuke, Yori, uh, Mi Miyako, and Ken don't exist so far. We'll touch on that later on when uh, the Kaiser actually does something. But for all intents and purposes, at the moment, Daisuke and the others don't exist, or they're not mentioned, or they're possibly dead, and they're just never brought up. It's there's no reference to them at all in this. So, as far as Joe is concerned, this is the third time he's had to fight, rather than the second time him being a mentor figure who sort of passed the baton on to someone younger and then gave advice from here, from you know, time to time. Uh, overall, though, I love the depth of the episode. I love the depth of the episode. Last chapter, I gushed over the character development, and this is no different. Mimi knowing that she's always been Jikochu despite having a moral standing about detesting saying nothing in a situation where you only end up complaining later. Joe trying to find his path to adulthood rather than being the older responsible member of the team who overcautiously looked out for everybody. The budding romance between Mimi and Maymay and Maymay possibly coming or starting to maybe come out of her shell a bit with Mimi's guidance. And, and Tai Chi and Yamato um, being at unspoken odds. So obviously there's tension from chapter one that hasn't been resolved in the few weeks or the few months between these two chapters. So like this series so far is great as a character study. A study of taking these fantastical situations and then applying real life to them. 
throwing it in a mental, melting pot and seeing what the result is. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX did this brilliantly with Season 3 and the rise of Hao Judai, or, or the Supreme King. Uh, finding out just what happens when the invincible hero character loses everything in something as trivial as a trading card game and pays the ultimate price for it. Like, all his friends die, he's trapped on another world, and just what happens when the trivial stuff, so something that we deem as trivial, becomes a, a point of, if you can't do this right, the world on your shoulders explodes. Or, you know, you fail. If you can't do this one thing right, you fail at everything, and you let everybody around you die. I love that kind of thing. It builds character, but not only that, it makes you care for the characters. And all I wanted to do was hug everybody after this episode and tell them that they'd be okay. When you break the traits that a car of a character and rebuild those characters, it makes for great drama. And I can't wait to delve into things further in episodes 7 and 8. So I hope you'll look forward to it and come along with me for that journey. Um, because again, I think this series is a great character study for how to take something as ludicrous um, or you know uh, as cyberspace and digital monsters and apply real life logic to it and just what would happen if these monsters ran amok or all that power was uncontained or you know it's just and I, I love it so I hope you'll stick with me um, as we explore that going further on of course this is where I do the cheap plugs you know make sure to um, be sure to like the video comment down below if you have your own theories or you want to get anything out um, subscribe for more again um, the reviews for episodes 7 and 8 will be going up shortly I'll be doing the scripting for uh, the episode 6 review sometime tomorrow so look forward to that you can also follow me on Twitter at fight Gun and fight uh, if you search fight Gun and fight media on Facebook you'll find me I'm on twitch under fight Gun and fight all links will be in the description down below so you know do be sure to check those out um, but that's it I wrap up here we're nearly at the 15 minute mark so again thank you everyone for your time I hope you've enjoyed this little look at adventure try episode 6 and I'll be with you shortly for episode 7 take care Mind yourselves.